the inside story on the issues that affect you and your community. This is Local 12 Newsmakers. For months, the five brand new Cincinnati streetcars have been out on the streets of downtown Cincinnati. For those who worked to move the streetcar forward and fought to save it two and a half years ago, this has been a giant tease. The streetcar is here, but nobody can get on. Well, that will end this Friday when the streetcar, rebranded the Cincinnati Bell Connector, goes into service. Good morning and welcome to Local 12 Newsmakers. Uh, I'm Dan Hurley. It's been 65 years, April the 29th, 1951, since the streetcar has carried passengers in Cincinnati. But this coming Friday, Cincinnati joins 10 other American cities that have embraced the modern streetcar technology and either have systems in development or operation. Bringing the streetcar back to Cincinnati has been controversial and a source of political debate, but now that the system is ready to roll, more and more people are literally getting on board. I am joined this morning by John Schneider, the streetcar's most articulate supporter. For years, John has been inviting groups of Cincinnatians on trips to Portland, Oregon to study their light rail and streetcar system. When I went um, on one of those trips a decade or so ago, I thought we were going to explore light rail. I didn't know a thing about Portland and its streetcar system and had no understanding of its potential role in the city's economy and development. And David Mann, the vice mayor of Cincinnati, three years ago, Mr. Mann campaigned challenging the streetcar and when elected insisted on a major review before supporting proceeding with the project. This coming weekend he will help oversee uh, the launch of the streetcar and apparently serve as a not driver <laughs> Celebrity conductor. Sitting Celebrity on conductor welcoming people <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> Welcome to uh, news Newsmakers. This is pretty Thank exciting you. and it's John especially exciting. for yeah. you. Yeah. So how would you see our streetcar system that now is built, ready to go, how would you see it compared to the other systems that you know about in the United States? Well, time will tell, but I think Cincinnati has built the best streetcar system in the United States. Uh, I've been on half of them. I know about the rest of them. Uh, we have a great route. Our, our vehicles are terrific. And the workmanship uh, done by local contractors is as good as I'd ever seen in the cities that I visited. So uh, I, I think we've, uh, we've, we've set a new high bar here in Cincinnati. We're going to have a great, great, great project. David, there was a lot of controversy, debate, <laughs> discussion. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I right. missed all that. What, what was about, the gonna, about the trolley? About the trolley? We're not going to go back and re-talk about that. That's, that's over. It's in the past. As things get closer, as with the last couple of months, when once the cars, let's say, appeared on the street, because right. I think that was a real turning point, yeah. um, what's the mood at City Hall? What's the mood among both elected officials and administrators? Well, first of all, I want to thank John for being such a visionary. If you want to talk about the single person that had most to do with the fact that the streetcar is going to start operating Friday, it has to be John Snyder. And I agree with you on okay. that. Um, I do. There's a lot of excitement. And uh, I think uh, to a person on city council at least, the desire is that the streetcar succeed. There's no purpose in investing over $100 million, including a lot of uh, local dollars, and have it fail. So a lot of good things have been done, and it's a very exciting moment for our city. Uh, unfortunately, I have vivid memories of the streetcars that <laughs> <laughs> stopped running in, in, in 1951. Uh, and this is a good thing for so many reasons. Yeah. So. Uh, if you had to describe, John, what the difference between the modern streetcar <laughs> and the streetcars that some of us are old enough to remember, and I remember more the northern Kentucky streetcars well, because that's where I, I grew up. That's where I was, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. Kentucky. That's yeah, where you were, yeah, too. Yeah. Um, so how would you describe, now people see, have seen it, but how, do you, how would you describe what that, those differences are? Well, the new streetcars are, are much larger, uh, heavier, 78,000 pounds empty. Uh, very quiet. Uh, you can you can turn your back and kind of miss one uh, going by. Um, key thing about our vehicle, uh, it ha it's 100% low floor, no mm -hmm. steps anywhere. So you know we're an aging population. People with disabilities are going to be able to board this and maneuver around uh, much more room than a bus. Um, they uh, have uh, there's some technical things about their about our streetcar gives them to be able to climb hills. Uh, there, there is no comparison between what went off the streets in 1951 and what we're, we're doing here. These are actually light rail vehicles. They're, these are what we, we bought 
light rail vehicles that uh, if you configured them differently, put more seats in them, geared them differently, uh, that could take you, you know, 15, 20 miles out in the suburbs. That's, and the track was built for light rail, for trains. Basically. Right, and it is yeah. light rail track right. Uh, right. in terms of the heaviness and the width and all of those sorts of things. Right. So, you know, that whole point, uh, John has made the point about this is, uh, these are more powerful. Uh, this, we have a, in his words, a great route. We do. David, <laughs> one of the questions has always been, well, where do we go from here? And, you oh. know, <laughs> and, and how do you see that at this point? What, what's sort of the talk about uh, this is a beginning, do we expand? At some point, I, I hope we have a serious discussion about that. We have to uh, feel that uh, uh, phase one is successful. I think it will be. And one of the questions people ask, well, how do you measure success? That's right. Uh, riders and rider revenues, and that's part of it. But the other measure, is the fantastic development that has been and is taking place along the streetcar route. You talk to developers uh, north of uh, Liberty, north of Central Parkway, south of Central Parkway, and they say one of the reasons that they're building and have built, one of the reasons they think they can get the uh, rent levels that they're talking about is because of the streetcar as a means of transportation, as a symbol of modern urbanism. Uh, so as we actually operate the streetcar, uh, people embrace it, then we can have a serious conversation about the next steps. And what was being talked about earlier was uh, connecting the hospitals up the hill, the university up the hill. There's a tremendous capital investment, so we have to find a, uh, a better way to finance that if it, if it's going to be a reality. But let's talk about making sure phase one is successful before we get to phase two. John, on that question <coughs> of, of success and how to measure success, uh, David's brought up the question which you've always talked about every time I've ever had you on this show or seen you other places is, this isn't just about transportation, this is about development. And right. how would you, when you look at where we are right now, What's already been accomplished? Well, first of all, it, David mentioned the buildings. What's important to remember, there are actually people in those buildings yeah, right. that are living and working there and paying taxes to the city of Cincinnati. Uh, more importantly, in streetcar neighborhoods, uh, people kind of give up the use of their cars, and so they, rather than run to the suburbs to buy something, they buy locally, and that causes more investment and causes more jobs. So that's really the driver here. When the, when the economic consultants estimated the benefits, I can't remember the exact number, but 85 or 90 percent of the benefits were from the permanent economic development. And at some point, we're going to other other cities have gone back and looked at it uh, in terms of what the streetcar has has brought to the party. But the big thing is, <clears throat> in downtown and over the Rhine and in uptown, uh, parking is very expensive to provide. Yeah. And who ends up paying for parking? We do, right? The city often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it is, uh, you know, if we can reduce that burden from development, it makes development much more easy to do. And again, when people you know, drive less and shop locally, that's good for our city. So I'm confident those numbers are, are gonna be there. I, I've read the studies and we are so far, I mean, so far ahead of what they project in terms of economic development. Uh, is, I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, we are way, way ahead. What about in terms of measures to evaluate ridership? <coughs> uh, what, you know, a year out, two years out, three years out, what, what should, th those are in place too, right? Don't we have projections about ridership? I think it was about 3,000 riders like a that. day, something like that. Uh, there are counters at every door. We'll be able to have good numbers on that. It's not like we have to have people with clipboards writing down, you know, counts. So we'll know what those numbers are. We'll have counts by stations uh, of people boarding and deboarding the streetcars. So we'll really get a very microscopic view of how this is performing, you know, where the demand is. Uh, that may cause us to adjust the schedule a little bit in terms of maybe starting or later or ending later. Um, it's, this is not your old time trolley. This is a very sophisticated uh, piece of equipment and a very sophisticated system. Uh, One of the things that you raised when we were just talking about the future, uh, this is more powerful. Is this, more, <coughs> is this powerful enough to pull Clifton Hill, for example? Uh, it, it's not powerful enough to climb Clifton Hill. Uh, it, it would be powerful enough to climb uh, the Vine Street Hill. Uh, I don't want to get over technical, but in our streetcars, each of the wheels has its own motor. You've heard of four-wheel drive? This is eight-wheel drive. So our streetcars have a climbing ability that exceeds what maybe a normal rail vehicle would have. And I think that they were, our particular model was uh, partly picked for that reason. 
but we'll get to we'll get up there. Um, you know, and generally with these systems, you want you start where you know it's going to be successful, which is the downtown and, right. and over the Rhine. But ine inevitably, you connect your major universities and your hospitals, and that's going to happen. Yeah, I want to put out put the route up. I, I we've got that. One of the things to remind people of, this goes all the way down to the banks, too. Oh, yeah. Right. And the banks on the southern side of this route, I mean, we're seeing a lot of development down there. We've got a lot of, the city right. has a lot of investment mm -hmm. in the banks and making sure that that's a success in terms of people living there, working there, the new GE facility, all of those are related to this. David, you've been mayor in the past. Uh, you know about development. Um, are these the sorts of things that just people like John Schneider believe in, or is this the sort of thing that on a practical political level people come in and talk to the city about, oh, sure. th that this is an asset? Yes, of course. I mean, uh, when GE uh, decided to uh, come to Cincinnati and come to the banks, one of the reasons given by their spokesman was the streetcar. And we've had other developers come in and say what interests them about Cincinnati, among other things, is the streetcar. It's a symbol says something about where the city is uh, and whether it's a modern urban city or not. And the, the thing that speaks to me, I've, I've had some, in my law practice, had some young lawyers from New York City come to town and we went up to Over the Rhine uh, for dinner and uh, I said, the streetcar's being constructed. And you know, they, they said, this feels like Brooklyn. It feels, so, you know, they're, people want to live in downtown Cincinnati. It's amazing. I mean, consider what's on the route. <laughs> <coughs> Six Fortune 500 <coughs> employers are within two blocks of the route. That's, I don't know, any other city that's built these that has that. Uh, two thirds of our, our region's major cultural institutions are within two blocks of the route. New parks, uh, lots of places for entertainment, and you know, one of the largest historic districts in the nation, and over the Rhine, that I think, frankly, could not have developed as, as quickly and as well as it has without the streetcar. Uh, it, this, this touches a lot of bases in our city. It's a, it's a very ingenious route, it really is. You know, uh, when streetcars were introduced in the 18, electric streetcars were introduced to Cincinnati in the 1880s. 1885, the year, the, was, car, the, year the car was invented. <laughs> there was a lot of controversy because the streets belonged to the pedestrians up exactly. till that point. Right. And you had to reteach pedestrians that they ought to be on a sidewalk, which took generations, by the way. It didn't just happen. Uh, now we've got streetcars being reintroduced. There's a certain amount of learning and we've had a couple of accidents between cars and uh, the streetcar, and we're, we're all gonna have to learn how to, to live with the streetcar as part of the streetscape as well. So what do you say about that? What do you, what's your suggestions to people driving downtown? You know, watch out, this is a, <laughs> this is a big vehicle. It is a big vehicle. Uh, and uh, it cannot leave the tracks. <laughs> uh, it cannot stop quickly. So uh, each of us, uh, pedestrian or motorist, has to uh, assume some responsibility. And you know, there, there are places where what the streetcar has to do is counterintuitive. As it goes east on Central Parkway and gets ready to turn down Race, it's it's on the uh, inboard inbound and in, in near the me, uh, the middle, and then it turns all the way across. So uh, there's a special signal for this, and the motors that are also going east. Uh, uh, are, get a, a red light, so pay attention to that. And don't move because the streetcar suddenly is turning across across you. I, I told people before this opened, I said, we're gonna have accidents. Uh, it, I've seen this movie before, <laughs> and in every city, <laughs> they're, they're never serious accidents, uh, but, the, it, it, but all I can say is over time, it gets sorted out and you don't, you don't read about that uh, right. anymore. It just, it just when it's the first one or the second one. Yeah, the, and deal. these things accelerate very fast. Uh, yeah, it, I'm still wanting to have the person who thinks they can walk fast in the streetcar. I want to, I want to meet <laughs> that person. Uh, and and they, um, they're just like David said. They're they can't leave, and they people misjudge them. But over time, that that problem will solve itself. I think. Yeah, one thing that I'm very committed to alerting people to, and uh, and that's also if you're a cyclist. You got to be. Right. You got to learn to work with the streetcar tracks. Right. And I don't know if you've seen those um, yellow tri triangular signs or cyclists flying over. Cyclists <laughs> flying. <laughs> there it is. There like you go. This right one. There. Yeah. I actually was the model for that <laughs> about uh, almost two years ago. And let me tell you, it's serious. 
So yeah. you have to go across those tracks right, right. at an angle. You can't yeah. just sort of guide over. And I mean, I ride a lot. I just didn't, I saw all that nice, smooth concrete in the middle of those two tracks. I thought I'd just slide over and take advantage of it. Bam, got down. Yeah. So, and, the, and the cars have to learn too. What I've seen in other cities, the cars over time start to maybe avoid uh, where the streetcars running, they maybe go a block over when they travel. Uh, everybody's worried about Walnut Street between 7th and 3rd. My guess would be, and that, that is a congested part of our city, and my guess would be over time people will feel that, you know, maybe they go down another street to, to go home. It just, it's a learning process, but it, we'll do it. Every other city's done it. Yeah. It'll be or fun. they'll ride the streetcar. Or they'll ride the streetcar. Yeah. They'll get rid of the car and move downtown, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and I think that's really the case. I mean, are the, the young professionals, yeah. YPs, right aren't so interested in owning cars. And if you live downtown and you have transportation, mm -hmm. uh, the other thing too is you can take your bikes onto these. Yes, you can. And right. you can hang them up inside. Actually, the, the we won't hang them on ours. We'll, you'll just hold them there. You just hold them? On light rail, because the vehicles move much faster for longer distances, they do hang them up. That's what you saw, I think, yeah. probably in Portland. Well, that's one of the advantages of the, of the low uh, yeah. body. You just. Uh, you don't have to t carry them up steps or anything like and that. And if you're, you know, filling market and dragging a trolley behind right. you, you know, I mean, uh, luggage, I mean, it just, sure. it's, it's, people are going to, they're, they're going to like this. <laughs> they're, they're really going to like this. So, um, the weekend when this takes place, right. Friday is sort of the, the opening ceremonies. Um, will there be any politicians speaking? Yeah, I think there will. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a funny story, Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Uh, the, the city manager's office uh, apparently is asking each council office, would he or she like to speak? And God knows, I hope we don't have nine <laughs> of us <laughs> speak, speak. But if you ask an elected official, do you want to speak? So I, hopefully we can find a way to shorten the ceremony. We, uh, one we, thing for your, yeah. Well, yeah. we hope to have a, uh, some sort of uh, representation from the administration in town. I don't think that's been confirmed yet, but uh, okay. I've heard maybe the Everybody needs to be there at 10:15. The, they want people and there is uh, the north end of Washington Park at 14th Street I believe yeah. uh, but they want people in their seats at 10 15 it starts at 10 30 and then it goes on the rest of the weekend and the rest of the weekend it's free yes it's free you can get in you can test it out for that whole Friday through uh, the end of Sunday when it shuts down thanks uh, thanks to some good Cincinnatians who put up the money to buy all those fares for us okay yeah. so this is a great way to get started thank you for being here this morning thank to you. get up to speed about the Cincinnati Bell connector go to the official website cincinnati.ohio-ohio.gov uh, slash streetcar you can find information about the route the opening activities all kinds of things Stay tuned. After the break, progress on reclaiming the Mill Creek as a recreational asset running through Hamilton County and an opportunity to get personally involved. Welcome back. When you say recreational asset, I'll bet that the first thing you, that jumps to your mind isn't the Mill Creek. But three weeks ago, my wife and I were part of the third annual Mill Creek bike ride. We've made all three. Two weeks ago, I, as a proud member of the Mill Creek Yacht Club, we paddled on the, the creek through Redding, St. Bernard, and Northside, a fascinating way to see uh, a glimpse of the industrial history of the region. The Mill Creek Watershed Council of Communities is leading a variety of efforts to improve the Mill Creek and make it an asset to the 37 communities in the watershed. And the good news is that you have a chance to celebrate the comeback of the Mill Creek next Sunday. I am joined this morning by Jennifer Eismer, the director of the, count, of the council. Ms. Eismer also serves as a member of the Wyoming City Council. Jennifer, welcome back to Newsmakers. Thank you, Dan. All right, let's talk about, before we talk about the event uh, on, uh, in a couple weeks here, let's talk about the state of the Mill Creek. How would you describe what the quality, the condition of the Mill Creek is, and what are you, what's your organization doing about it? The Mill Creek is improving. Unequivocally, it is improving. The Watershed Council is 21 years old, and we were formed to build consensus among the 37 communities that are making decisions around one water resource. 
um, we have seen significant improvement. The way that we define improvement is that we see better, by which I mean more diverse and more desirable communities of fish and bugs in the stream, which ah. means that it's able to, it has better habitat, better water quality, so it's able to so support. So it's not a dead stream. It's not at all a dead stream. It's not at all a dead stream. In fact, streams are self-healing. The Mill Creek is no different. It's surprisingly resilient. All the abuse that we've heaped on it for 200 years to make the development of Greater Cincinnati possible, the Mill Creek breasts its little heart. It just keeps on doing its thing, and it's, it's getting better. But it has a long way to go. But you, you are active in trying to help it along. Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so now yes. we're taping this ahead of when this is actually sure. airing. And this morning, what was happening? This morning, we had uh, the cow company out in the Mill Creek with 100 folks. So KAO. KAO, that's right. Uh, so they are out on the Mill Creek today. They're uh, doing some vegetation management. They're picking up trash. They're going to find a lot of it. Uh, they're doing that. <laughs> Tires are a real problem. Uh, they're uh, picking up trash on land and in canoe. OK. And, and just hauling it out? That's right. That's right. So we're getting rid of that stuff. And then we're going to uh, landfill it, which is, is what it all is. Um, and it's really just basic maintenance of the Mill Creek. One thing, historically, the Mill Creek was a really convenient way to dispose of industrial waste. That is still true today. Trash that you see in the gutter will end up in the Mill Creek. It just goes to streams. So there is no shortage of rubbish in there. So the idea, and <laughs> since I've known you for the past five years <laughs> or so, you've gotten me canoeing on the Mill Creek. Yes. We're, we're biking along the Mill Creek. Um, and you do see it, ultimately, as a real anchor of recreation absolutely in the valley absolutely there's no denying that the mill creek has a little bit of an image problem <laughs> often what is yeah. yes i'm not going to deny it it's true what you see often the most visible piece of it is uh at i-75 and mitchell avenue uh -huh. um, and that is really a misrepresentation of what the mill creek is and certainly not characteristic of what it could be right. um, which is what our recreational activities are all about um, we we at the council are very much accountable for water quality improvements and habitat improvements. That's something that we take very seriously. For, for people, and you know, when I think about me and my family and kind of the things that I value, we want fun. We want to play. And so we really, to kind of change that image, the perception of that, we want people to be out experiencing all of the fun things that the Mill Creek has to offer. And that's what this is all about. And, and that's what you're going to do on, uh, what is it, September the 18th? That's right, yeah. We've, we've got a full screen here. We get, on September the 18th, yes. there's a chance to celebrate that's the right. comeback that's right. of the right. Mill Creek. And people are going to have a chance to canoe, Absolutely. to bike, and just to plain party. Right, that's right. So we, this, is a, this event is five years old, and when we started it, we thought, you know, we really just need to have a party on the banks of the Mill Creek and just say, this is a place that is worth having we can have fun out here, so let's just do it. And that's what we've been doing, and we have a great time every year. So there are a lot of, uh, when you take people out when onto the creek uh, with the Yacht Club, for example, um, there's a lot of education and warnings sure. about what to be careful about, yes. what to do and what not to do. I don't want to give the impression here that we're just throwing people out there willy-nilly. That's right. We're very, we take safety very seriously and there's no doubt there are hazards on the Mill Creek so we are very we have to be very careful about what we do and when we get out on the water there are certainly risks um, but it's a fantastic way to get to know the city in a whole new in a whole new way well that's why I wanted to do this segment of the paddle that that sure. we're going to do because it's going to go behind Ivory Dale that's right and I want to see behind Ivory Dale. That's a Dale. really interesting a very interesting reach and when you're thinking about an urban stream it's not like a natural stream you have to sort of shift your framework for what a stream can a functional stream can look like in an urban area it's very very interesting yeah. very interesting. Yep so have you have you pretty much paddled the whole thing? You know we there are 20 it's 28 miles from the headwaters of uh -huh. Liberty Township to the confluence with the Ohio River 26 miles of those 28 are actually navigable. The other okay. two are, they can't do it. Yeah. I have paddled probably 20 of those, yeah. and then some tributary streams. Yeah, 
down at the mouth, going through the barrier dam and out into the Ohio. It's, it's like you made it to the Pacific. I mean, it just opens up. It it's does. just amazing. It does. So, all right, well, if you have been part of the effort over the last 30 years or so and you would like to find out what's going on, a celebration of the Mill Creek Comeback will be held on Sunday, September the 18th from 1 to 4 at is it Koenig? Koenig Park. Koenig Park, those Germans, on Columbia <laughs> Avenue in Redding, Ohio. The canoe trip begins at 1, the bike ride at 2. Uh, so be sure to check out the details at millcreekwatershed.org. Thank you for making Newsmakers a part of your Sunday morning. Have a good week.